mouth with two inch teeth trying to take your arm off. Battling stingrays with razor sharp whips. Oh my God, it's enormous. Where's the fish? All right, everybody stay cool, Mel. Wrangling eels thicker than tree trunks. Oh, there he is. That's a big one. Take chances with it and you've lost your foot. Or you've had a large chunk taken out of your leg. And capturing the biggest squid on the planet. Tentacles hanging on to the side of the ship and wrapped around the gaffs and everybody yelling and screaming. Unbelievable battles between the world's most amazing anglers and mighty fish. Whether for science, sport or food, these are the most extreme encounters with monster fish. January 2007, New Zealand Sea Captain John Bennett sets out for a three-month fishing expedition to one of the most unforgiving places on Earth. Antarctica. It's sort of 24-hour daylight, and the sun's up all the time, and uh, icebergs and, and uh, sea ice everywhere and uh, freezing conditions. Captain Bennett's 55 meter long vessel is on the hunt for the commercially popular toothfish. But something's wrong. Deckhands repeatedly see evidence of competition for the fish below. More than one and a half kilometers beneath the surface, something huge is stalking their catch. 30, 35 kilo fish would come up with huge big sucker marks all over it. Some of them were bitten in half and and big chunks eaten out of them. Probably one in every three or four fish will be damaged like that. But nothing can prepare them for what happens next. Hell, look at that. On the morning of the 26th, commotion breaks out on deck as a large object appears at portside. That's a big fish. The deckhands can't believe their eyes. Beside the boat, gnawing on a toothfish, is the biggest squid anyone has ever seen. Incredibly, the creature's risen 1,800 meters to the surface and is still alive. A tentacled beast, nicknamed the Kraken, has haunted seafarers for centuries. Yet it may actually be real, the colossal squid. The old woodcuts and illustrations of of giant squid attacking ships and uh, pulling people off the decks and under the water are pretty exciting, pretty telling. Squid are some of the planet's strangest creatures. Boneless, gelatinous, soaring through the ocean powered by an undulating water jet propulsion. Equipped with two feeding tentacles, they hunt with eight grasping outstretched arms, wrapping victims in a sucking, deadly embrace. Their arms are so strong some squid species have been known to walk along the bottom of the ocean. Once caught, squid prey are pulverized. These predators slice into their meals with flesh-cutting bird-like beaks. Squids who have just captured a fish will manipulate the fish so that the beak can bite just behind the head, sever the spinal cord and render the fish immobile while they take their time and, and, and ingest it. When threatened, squid use an ingenious defense mechanism. Fountains of ink shoot out, leaving a cloud as a decoy. They can even manipulate their own skin. To blend into their surroundings, squid can create skin patterns and colorations at will. Squids can put stripes along their bodies, they can put hash marks, blotches, or they can contract all of the chromatophores and all of the color will disappear. But one squid trumps them all, the colossal. Living far below the surface, no biologist has ever studied them in their natural habitat. Yet evidence of squid remains, found inside the bellies of their only adversary, the sperm whale, is shocking.
an animal like the giant squid or the colossal squid may live for three years, but probably not much longer than that. What that means is that these animals grow incredibly fast, probably the fastest growth rates of any animal on Earth. For centuries, capturing this legendary creature was considered impossible, until one fishing expedition dared to defy the odds. It's not a good look when you're talking to the boys in the pub when you get home about the, the world's first and only colossal squid that got away. You know, I can just hear them saying, now, yeah, you're right, you know. Back on the boat, as the deckhands stare in wonder at the mythical beast, they've got to move fast. Using pole gaffs, they scramble to secure the squid to the vessel. The men struggle to hang on, but the creature's jelly-like body makes maneuvering it next to impossible. The squid's tentacles begin winding around the gaffs. They were hanging on to this massive creature um, and the squid's tentacles were moving around the gaff. So needless to say, my first thought was, careful, this might, you know, fight back. Roused from his cabin, Captain Bennett arrives on deck to a surreal scene. To see something like that alongside the ship, tentacles hanging on to the side of the ship and wrapped around the gaffs and everybody yelling and screaming and I didn't really know what to do first. The ship is navigating a treacherous ice field. A decision has to be made, whether to stop the boat and save the squid for science or to let it loose. I knew that we had something special here and uh, this was the first live colossal squid ever to be you know, caught. Our reaction was to um, sort of retain it in, uh, in the best condition that we possibly could. So that was going to be our challenge for the day. The captain decides to preserve the squid in the ship's holding well, but stopping the 1,500 tonne vessel to pick up a sea monster was not in his plans. It's a daunting and dangerous task. The outside temperature is two degrees Celsius, the water a minefield of jagged icebergs. And as the crew strives to hold onto the squid, their gaffs keep sinking into its flesh. At one stage there, we thought we were going to lose it. The gaffs weren't holding on well enough. We thought it was going to get free. You guys got it? Can we hold it here? The ship was still slowly moving through the water. The mate was driving, so he had to pull a pitch astern and slow it right down so that we, that we weren't moving at all. That was tricky. The first mate manages to bring the boat to a grinding halt. The deck can still have the squid hooked, but a successful capture is far from certain. We had the squid alongside, it was secure, and now we had to get it on board. We knew what we uh, wanted to achieve, it just didn't quite know how to do it. I'm just gonna check it, out, eh? it came up to the surface and seemed to intake a lot of water, and at that stage it, its bulk increased just about by double. And it was then that we realised just how big it was. It was enormous, it really was, it was huge. Can you go get the net? Jack, can you go get the rope in my hand? The crew quickly lowers a gangway net alongside the boat, yet the creature eludes all efforts to wrangle it. He's hanging on to the side of the, the ship, and of course anything that gets close that includes the net. So it was a sort of encouraging to let the side of the ship go and not to touch the net and as we slid it down under. One really excited crew member suggested he should get in the water. I'll put a suit on dropping. No, no, that will get you. If you do that, you'll be gone. No way, absolutely not. You know, it was far too dangerous. He could have got, um, you know, forced under, stuck between the, the ship and the squid and, and probably bitten or, or eaten. Repeatedly, the squid resists entering the net but the crew refuses to quit. Hold it, fellas. Hold on to it. After three tense hours, the team's skilled manoeuvring pays off. They've got the mysterious monster. It was just a big adrenaline rush. And uh, to, to know that we've got, you know, one of the first live colossal squid alongside the ship here, and um, it, was, uh, it was special. It was a moment that I'll never forget. It's heavy. That squid is real heavy, fellas. But now there's another challenge, hauling the squid on board. It's so gigantic, the crew needs a massive winch to bring it onto the boat. At 
last they've done it. It's the largest colossal squid ever caught. They're the first people ever to lay eyes on a living specimen. Estimated at over 450 kilograms, stretching more than nine meters long, the size is jaw-dropping. This is awesome. It's, it's a mysterious creature that we, we haven't uh, had the opportunity to, to examine, and here it was right for us. I'm going to have so much fun describing the colossal squid to the grandkids in the future. I'm going to live on that one for a long time. Today, the phenomenal beast is preserved at New Zealand's Te Papa Museum. A stunning glimpse of a deep ocean universe and a reminder of the importance of protecting these monster fish for the next millennia. These ravenous beasts are one of the planet's most dangerous predators. Lone hunters, they have one mission, destroy and devour the tiger shark. The strength of that bite, you would not be able to pull out without leaving a substantial portion of yourself there with the shark. They are very powerful. Truly titanic and unchanged for millennia, the largest tiger shark reportedly measured close to three and a half tons. Even an average specimen can grow four meters from tail to tip. And further fueling their prodigious appetites are teeth built like carving knives. The front edge pierces and holds prey, while a jagged rear edge soars through flesh and bone. This design allows tiger sharks to rip prey other sharks can't penetrate. Even rock-solid sea turtle shells can't keep this monster fish from its next meal. And even for professional anglers, battling a fighting tiger shark takes a staggering amount of skill and nerve. With shark fishing, the danger is when, when they come to the boat, because they'll, they, they attack you, they, you know, they charge the boat, they try to you know, bite you, and it's just, they're insane when they come to the boat. It's prehistoric. July the 16th, 2005, Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. Sports fisherman Ivo Allen charters a boat to travel off the coast to do battle with the largest, most fearsome predator he can find. So it's nice to kind of add to the chum slick some fresh scent in the water from these fish we're catching now. We're just wasting time if we don't have chum going in the water at 24-7. Ivo and his crew are competing in a two-day monster shark tournament with a $260,000 grand prize. The contest combines science and sport, as the teams plan to tag, measure, and release smaller sharks for the National Marine Fisheries Apex Predator Program. You, you catch them, you reel them in, and then what we do is we tag the fish. We measure it as best as possible because they're pretty feisty when they come to the boat. We try to calculate the weight of the fish, and then we cut the leader. By building research into the tournament, Scientists are able to raise conservation awareness and protect species increasingly threatened in commercially overfished waters. Good job. Good work. Now, it's midday on the last day of the tournament. The anglers have caught, tagged, and released nine sharks. But they've yet to land the monster specimen that could win the contest. I'm not marking a thing, man. Already 30 kilometers offshore, Ivo and the sea captain make their decision to head even farther out to sea. Clear those rods right now. I said, let's go. Everybody looked at me like I was crazy. You know, my mates were second guessing me. We're going, we're going. And we ran for two and a half hours, and it was it was silent on in the cockpit. I mean, people just gave up. The team circles a six-kilometer area, dispensing a steady stream of chum. Hopes are high for attracting a shark, but there's little time left. Did you see him out there, Brian, or not? No. Suddenly, something breaks the surface of the water. Can you tell what it is? 
Something enormous has just taken the bait, and the line is ripping off the rod with astounding speed. A lot of people ask me, what did it feel like? And you take your line with a hook on the end and go ahead and stand on the side of the freeway, and you hook a car that's going by at 30 miles an hour. That's exactly what it's like, because it was just hold on for dear life. Very dangerous, guys. Be real careful. At the mercy of a gigantic fighting fish, the crew scrambles to clear the deck. They know all too well, if the lines get tangled, the monster shark can break away. I don't care if he's pulling, you pull back. We need this fish now. But just staying upright is a back-breaking struggle. At that point, I'm not even fighting the fish. I'm just holding on. Come on, that fish is tired, Ivo. Let's go. You know, trying being from pulled overboard. Waves are crashing into me, crashing over me, and it's, I mean, it's a surreal experience. It's total, total adrenaline. How many feet we got? The tension on the line is unbearable. Ivo's straining for any leverage he can get. To gain some slack, the captain decides on a reckless gamble, changing course and heading towards the shark. Get that slack up. He reverses the boat towards the thrashing predator. Fish is going all over the place here. Approaching an enormous angry tiger shark is never a good idea. But the team's determined to win. Get ready to get him, guys. The captain's maneuver works. Tension is off the line, and Ivo fights back by reeling in the slack. He's got a chance, but it's still a muscle-burning battle for every inch of line. Where's the fish? All right, everybody stay cool now. Everybody stay cool. I was thinking about quitting. I mean, it's like, I can't do it. There's no way. This fish is just too big. And everyone's screaming at me, you know, you know, look at the time, look at the time. Finally, after 30 grueling minutes of arm-wrenching work, the team gets a first glimpse of their adversary, and it's a chilling sight. Damn, it's huge! The fish comes up, and it goes dead silent. Everyone's just sitting there looking at the water like, holy, you know, what did we just catch? The hell do we have on the end of the line? Jay just looks at me and he goes, big fish, and he, and he looks scared. It's, the winner. it's a tiger shark over five meters long. The notorious predator's only a few feet from the boat and extremely agitated. The creature's powerful jaws are lashing out at anything and everything, including the boat. You have the 17-foot shark with uh, with a mouth that's three feet wide, that's you know, jumping up onto the boat trying to bite anything it can. I'd never seen a shark so close to the boat of that size, so so I was a little bit horrified. <laughs> Though tired from the fight, the thrashing shark is still incredibly dangerous. The first mate stands ready with a rope and a large gaffing hook. All right, everybody. Pay close attention, guys. I want everybody paying real good attention. You fall in the water, you're dead, because it's it's biting everything. It can, anything it can bite to get away, it's going to bite. So if, if someone fell over, they would have lost a leg or an arm or something. The first mate reaches into the ocean and grabs the enormous shark's tail. Get on! Hold tight. Hold tight. Hold it tight. The team secures the fin to a tower on the back of the boat, and they've done it. They've captured a 540 kilogram tiger shark. My arms were killing me, my legs were killing me. I mean, there wasn't any part of my body that didn't hurt. It was just painful, but the exhilaration, everyone just picked me back up. They just, they grabbed me from the deck and they're hugging me, they give me high fives and it was just, it was crazy. But now the race is on. As the team speeds back to shore, the enormous tiger surfs the boat's wake. They're over 100 kilometers from the dock, with just over three hours left before the tournament deadline. We're all just looking at our watch. No, no one's saying anything, we're just looking at our watch. It wasn't gonna happen. You got the winning fist, there's no doubt about that, but... Arriving just moments after the 6.30 cutoff, the anglers miss out on a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah, you know, it really laid on my shoulders. If I could have gotten it in a little quicker, you know, six minutes sooner, we were on. Though the shark didn't survive the journey, biologists on hand dissect the fish for vital research. It's the biggest specimen the apex predator program has ever seen. 
and an invaluable opportunity to better understand these magnificent and deadly monster fish. Discovered only 20 years ago in Southeast Asia, the giant freshwater stingray has reached superstardom as one of the largest known freshwater fish. Specimens have stretched as long as a limousine, up to five meters from nose to tail. And scientists speculate they get even bigger, supersized rays weighing over half a ton. When threatened, this alpha predator has a secret weapon. Projecting from the base of its tail is a spear-like barb over 30 centimeters long, and to seal the killer deal, it's lined with hooks. If you step on it and the barb pierces your skin, then you're gonna get some of that toxin in, in your own tissue, and it can be really nasty. The ray's flattened surface area picks up resistance as it's pulled upwards, turning these beasts into dead weight. For anglers, it's a back-breaking struggle. I believe that the giant freshwater stingray is comparable with anything in marine waters. For a freshwater fish, it is all the, ultimate, the ultimate capture. March 2008, the Ban Pakong River, 80 kilometers southeast of Bangkok, Thailand. Home to the giant freshwater stingray. Local fishing guide, Wuta Chai Boy Kuensuan, has pioneered search strategies for giant rays in Asia. Today, Boy and his friends head out on a quest to break their personal record of 180 kilograms. The giant stingray is like a dinosaur hiding at the bottom of the river. But if he's out there, we will find him. Catching these creatures takes a team effort. Boy's technique involves baiting a series of rods with snakehead fish and spreading them out across the river. The men watch and wait. There's a sudden tug on the line. Boy scrambles to gain leverage, but the powerful pull is stronger than anything he has ever felt. Chaos breaks out on the boat. The massive stingray is like a motor beneath the water, towing all four passengers upstream. It was a, a gigantic fish. It pulled the boat up and down the river, like five or six guys, all like holding on for dear life to this, this giant fish. The stingray grinds to a halt. The fish is stuck like a plunger to the riverbed, refusing to budge. But boy, also refuses to give up. He gathers all of his strength. Characteristically, they clamp themselves onto the bottom of the riverbed. Very hard to shift these fish when they do that. You could be talking about a 200 kilo fish with possibly 200 kilos of mud and debris on top of it, you know. To hold that rod with such huge fish on the other side of the line, you can't imagine how hard it is. It's like carrying a big rock on your shoulder and running around. Exhausted, Boy reluctantly passes the rod to another team member. Back, back, back. 
For three grueling hours, the men take turns fighting the fish. Their arms are trembling, their bodies tense with the prolonged struggle. The four anglers combined are no match for the gargantuan ray. One moment of lost concentration and the line will snap. The worn out anglers are desperate for any help they can get. Locals on the riverbank hear boys' cries for help and spring into action. Now, come on. A small craft brings reinforcements to the fight. Incredibly, the battle continues for three more excruciating hours as the new crew takes turns on the rod. It's now ten men versus one fish. I was just staring at the line. Please don't break. Please don't break. I have to see you. I have to see how big you are. Then, without warning, the ray surfaces. Come up now. Come up now. It is twice the size of the boat. The stingray grows tired, but before the men can land it, the exhausted anglers must risk their lives. The ray's huge, toxic stinger whips at the surface. Boy grabs the ray and another angler lunges for the lethal harpoon. The tail was flailing around. The guys grabbed the tail underneath the barb at the base of the tail and quickly wrapped a bandage around the barbs on the tail. With the dangerous tail subdued, the men now face a final challenge landing a fish the size of a refrigerator. The ray's too big for the net and the boat. The crew's only hope is to ground the monster ray in shallow water. As Boy and his team hold on to their prized catch, they slowly drag it to the shoreline. At last, they've landed the biggest ray they have ever seen. The stunned crowd stares in wonder at the colossal beast weighing a quarter of a ton with a wingspan of over two meters. The prehistoric rays a world record freshwater catch on rod and reel. I've shared this feeling with all the team. It's like a, a, a feeling of relief that you've actually managed to get the fish up without losing it, uh, elation and awe just at the sight of the creature, you know. But this mighty stingray belongs in the river. The team unhooks the fish of a lifetime and watch in wonder as it returns to its underwater lair. Among the ocean's mightiest monster fish, this fish is one of the biggest bullies. Pure muscle packed into a compact killer package. Fearless, aggressive, outmaneuvering the competition. They swoop in at turbo speed, decimating prey. The giant Trevally. The giant Trevally makes me think of a Shelby Cobra. A lot of power into a pretty small package that accelerates like nobody's business. Tropical Pacific Alpha Predators. Giant Trevallys patrol reefs with attitude. Capable of reaching nearly 68 kilograms, stretching over one and a half meters long, Trevally's harass everything in sight, even sharks. Here, a Trevally takes food right out of a barracuda's ripping jaws. They'll strike from the blind side of, of the prey, whether it's uh, bright light or dark water. They take advantage of the natural surroundings to make themselves invisible until they're too close to be avoided. And behind every bully, there's a formidable weapon. A thick, muscular body focuses power through a narrow area known as the caudal peduncle, giving giant trevallies powerful tail fins and stunning speed. With such aggressive power, the giant trevally is one of nature's toughest targets, turning a catch into a contact sport. Sometimes it'll just smack you into the side of the boat. It'll, it'll strike so hard. The intensity and the adrenaline pump. These little 150s, the 150s, well, I don't know, they seem to pull some strikes, eh? I don't know. 
January the 29th, 2008, New Caledonia in the South Pacific. Aussie angler Luke Worcester sets out with friends to chase the giant trevally, called GT for short. For passionate fishermen like Luke, this muscular fish is a fierce opponent that must be treated with respect. The GT, they are a gangster of the reef. They are so tough. I have such a mutual respect for this fish. It's my life. GT fishing is my life. And catching this monster fish is no easy task. I specifically am training just for GT fishing. Cramps up there, cramps in the bicep, and cramps up here, cramps in the forearm. If you're not in shape, GTs will find your weakness. The environment alone is challenging. I'll just take the boat over here and just spin it around back into the wind just to give you a good angle. GT live a few kilometres offshore, often amongst huge waves. Out here, Luke and his friends throw cast after cast. And they aren't the only predators on the hunt for GT. Sharks also circle ominously beneath. Oh, look at him, look at him, look at him. Red shark, red shark. Oh, he's so many sharks in. We've just hit a patch of bait, got our lure in the middle of it, hooked up a GT, and as soon as we've hooked up, we've had a big shark, a big whaler shark. Well, oh, needs no right. words. As dusk approaches, the group decides to stop for the day. But Luke casts one last time. One last cast in. And quickly feels a massive tug on the line. Sometimes a big GT can just maul and just throw up water everywhere. And you know, that's a big fish. Sometimes they can slurp it. This was one of those strikes. In an effort to pull the GT off the reef, the anglers gun the boat. But the Trevally has other plans. Amazingly, this tenacious fish is overpowering the vessel. It wasn't moving. If anything, the fish was pulling us back to the reef with the boat. As soon as they pull you back to the reef, you're gone. They'll cut you off, and you'll have lost all your hard work. That's a big one, big one. To make matters worse, the giant Trevally is ripping the rod from Luke's hands. He's got that rod dug straight into his gut, like, you know, he's going to need surgery to remove it. He's holding on for grim life, just trying to get as much gain on that fish as he possibly can. The angler struggles to get his footing and stay in the boat, but his arms are losing sensation. In this brutal tug of war, Luke is losing. As Luke fights to stay focused, the wrestling match rages for an excruciating 30 minutes. My muscles were full of lactic acid and they were ready to give up. Slowly but surely, I was able to start pumping and winding and slowly she started coming up. As the fish surfaces, the anglers get their first glimpse of the heavyweight on the other end of the line. When I saw that fish for the first time, I, I had no words. I was speechless. Oh, there he is. It's big. My God, <laughs> it's a Goliath. It looked like a Volkswagen. The giant Trevally is built on a monster scale, the biggest the group has ever seen. To get this monster on board, it'll take the strength of three men. As the six meter long vessel bounces on the churning sea, the fishermen try to hoist the Trevally onto the boat. With a final coordinated pull, at last, they've got it. It was taking up all the space. We had, we had no space to move. We just had this big slab-sided GT, and we almost didn't know what to do with it. It was that big. The giant Trevally's over 60 kilograms and an estimated one and a half meters long, a Goliath of the reef. It's the catch of a lifetime, but Luke is passionate about fish species survival. 
he knows he must release the GT as soon as possible. Pumping the fish's gills with seawater to keep it breathing, he carefully places his catch back in the ocean. Once we released that fish, she, she gave a few kicks, but then she started to descend. But she didn't descend normally. She turned on her side and she was basically exhausted from the fight and dying. The anglers watch in horror as the GT begins to spiral to the bottom. Luke does the unthinkable. He dives into shark-infested waters to save the fish. On board, his friends are in a panic. Come on, man. Oh, don't worry, it's only a fish bag. Come on. Get out of the water. <laughs> Get out of the water. The fish will be fine. I did think about it just as I was jumping in the water, but as soon as I was in, it was it's now or nothing. It's not a chance that I'll get again, and if I don't take it now and try to make a difference, then I'm not going to feel right. Ignoring his friend's anxious cries, Luke cradles the massive GT in his arms. As he struggles to move water through the giant fish's gills, they both become predator targets. At that point, you step into their realm, you are bait. So uh, there's always that chance. It was a bit more difficult than I had expected because I'd already exhausted my energy so much that I was even struggling to swim myself. So we were almost two of the same. Luke swims with the crippled giant for 10 long minutes. Slowly, the GT shows signs of life. With a sudden furious flick, the Trevally dance away. Luke and his catch of a career have both survived intact. Once I got back in the boat, my arms were trembling, my whole body was trembling, and you know, they were calling me nuts, but they knew I'd done the right thing. September the 8th, 2008, the English Channel, home to some of the most famous shipwrecks of World War II. The big wreck to fish in today or a small one? And for modern anglers, the perfect place to hunt for an elusive opponent, so I mean, the conger eel. eel. Now, for the first time in 30 years, conger enthusiast and devoted shore fisherman Roger Beer will fish from a boat, heading into the channel to chase this mighty fish. The expedition starts slowly. Luring the conger is a painstaking art. The eel prefers the safety of shipwrecks and must be coaxed out of any chosen hiding place. Roger feels a nibble on the line. A conger is toying with his bait. You feel every little tap and the eel was very slow biting. I just kept quiet because uh, I thought, well, if I miss it, I won't have to say too much. <laughs> uh, so I just let him go and just let a bit more line off and for 15, 20 minutes. Then he finally started going off and I just hit him like a steam train. The conger eel's ferocious jaws have locked onto Roger's bait. The fish is making a beeline for the shipwreck. Roger must keep the eel off the grounded vessel without snapping the line. It's a delicate balance, a game that can end at any moment. It's either you hook the fish, land it, or the fish will get the better of you and snap the line, or the fish will get in the rocks. That's how good they are. They're very, very cunning fish and very devious. These giant fish are like water-bound snakes. Famous for favoring shipwreck lairs, they hide in cracks and crevices, waiting to lash out with brutal strength and a mouthful of cutting, crushing teeth. They resemble a big snake, a big python or anaconda. Lots of muscle packed into a, a big, long, tubular shape. They're, they're very impressive animals. Able to reach lengths of over three meters, weighing more than 113 kilograms, congers are like creatures from science fiction. 
the undisputed kings of a family of eels made up of over 100 different species. Eels are powerful predators. They're really good at, at hiding out in the dark uh, behind some sort of cover and then striking out quickly to capture their prey. And if the first bite doesn't kill, the second one will. Eels use an extra set of teeth buried deep inside their throats, called the pharyngeal jaws, to snare and cut their meal, annihilating any hope of escape. For some anglers, this vicious creature is the ultimate adversary. Organizations like the British Conga Club chronicle the history of conga fishing, as decades of sportsmen have devoted entire careers to battling this mean, moody, and mysterious animal. It is a fish of considerable mysticism, really. There are people that have disappeared, fishing from small boats for conger, and have never been seen again. Yep. Back on the boat, Roger's experienced hand wins out. He keeps the eel in the open channel, but he soon faces an even tougher test. Certainly tires you out. <laughs> Endurance. The strength of the hooked conger is overwhelming. It's clear this is no ordinary eel. I was concentrating on uh, being one jump ahead of the eel. After 10 minutes or so, your arms start to uh, not be long for you. Uh, so you've got to concentrate to get that bit of power back. It was very uncomfortable trying to land the fish. Not a bad one, Rog. Without warning, the eel suddenly surfaces. There he is, Lord. <laughs> it's huge. A monster specimen stretching across the surface of the water like a giant snake. The fish, as it came up to the surface, I've never seen anything like it. I've seen eels to 80, 90 pounds, but this dwarf there. Oh, it's bloody huge, right? <laughs> Big one. But the conga doesn't stay up for long. With a sudden burst of energy, the eel makes a dash for the ocean floor. With luck, I managed to get him up, but every time I got him up, halfway, he went straight down again. He's diving. He kept going down again, and then up, and then down again. The line can snap at any moment. Roger struggles to stay as sharp and strong as the monster fish below. That's better, Roger. Keep going. After 30 grueling minutes, a breakthrough. The eel bobs back on the surface, showing signs of exhaustion. It's all right. But the battle isn't over yet. To land the catch, Roger's got to get the dangerous fish into the boat. Most of the fish are lost at the gaff because they're so powerful and they do a spin. Uh, they can rip a gaff at your hand, pull you in. Okay. The anglers hold their breath as the captain readies the gaff. Any experienced eel fisherman knows the closer you get to these predators, the greater the risk of losing your own flesh in their snapping jaws. You just keep away from its mouth because it's got big teeth. It's a big female. Marshalling his strength in one swift move, the captain hooks the gigantic eel and swings it into the boat. At last, they've landed the Goliath conger. Well, I say, Roger, that's a little bit bigger. <laughs> the anglers are amazed. The eel is even bigger than they imagined. Cheers. Uh, good one. Nice one, mate. Cracker. Well, so you don't kick, yeah? I'll do all right. Cracker. Almost three meters long, weighing in at 49 kilograms, it's the biggest conger captured off the coast of England in a decade. Oh, well, it's it phenomenal. It's brilliant, you know, I just, I just, I, I couldn't believe that I'd done it on the first trip out. One ten. That's all I need is one ten. pounder. Biggest deal I've ever seen. Maybe a little bit bigger. Mysterious creatures of the deep. They have inspired us, challenged us, and fed us for centuries. Now we must strive to protect and protect.